Rama and his team are said to have built this bridge over the seas to Lanka. Only if Rama is historical, then can this bridge be man-made. Did Rama really exist? Is Rama historical? While divinity is a matter of faith, historicity is a matter of existence. Well, in the last hundred years, giant strides have been made in understanding history using modern scientific tools. So, let us look at Ramayana from this fresh scientific perspective and see if Rama was indeed historical and whether specific dates can be attributed to him in the modern English calendar. Ramayana is a geographically correct text. Every place visited by Rama is today identifiable by historic landmarks, commemorative temples and local legends. Ramayana and Mahabharata, the traditional historical texts of India, contain many astronomical observations as recorded by the chroniclers. When we cull out these observations and search for them using the planetarium software, it throws up dates of when these configurations must have occurred in the past. We shall call this technique of dating using culled out astronomical observations embedded in ancient texts as archaeoastronomy. As this technique of exploring the sky configurations in the past for events mentioned is akin to digging into the earth for archaeological evidences. We all know that Rama's birth is celebrated on Sri Rama Naomi, which means that he was born on the ninth day of the lunar month of Chaitra. This sloka gives a detailed star configuration at the time of his birth. From this sloka, we can list out the positions of the planets. When this data is entered into the planetarium software, it gives us the date of Rama's birth as 10th January 5114 BCE. The dates thrown up by the planetary software are internally consistent with the sequence of events of the Ramayana legend. Let us look at ground facts now. No major archaeological relics of the period of Rama have been found on ground so far. This is because Rama is said to have lived thousands of years ago. In a continuous civilization, generations come and go and as they keep building and rebuilding their cities, they destroy or alter evidences of the previous generation. Hence, we don't find, and it's not easy to find, evidences in Ayodhya or other parts of the land today. The only place to look for archaeological evidences of Rama is the Rama Setu, which today could be submerged in the sea. The text gives the process of bridge construction in great and specific detail. This level of detailing of bridge construction urges us to examine the details. This construction detailing can be studied from the aspects of survey, planning and civil engineering involved. Rama and his team seem to have surveyed this land for a possible bridge construction site. Nala introduces himself as a biological descendant of the Vishwakarma clan and offers to build this bridge. Rama accepts his credentials and appoints him as the chief engineer. Under the command of Nala, the Vanara army go about building this bridge on the sea ridge. Let us examine the civil engineering techniques employed in this bridge construction. The first is the foundation details. The text very clearly states that wood from a variety of trees, the names of which are mentioned here, were first piled on the sea ridge to give a pile foundation or wood cushion effect. It was on top of this the large and small stones were piled on. This animation here shows us clearly the seabed from which the sea ridge rises as an outcrop which is natural and undulating. On top of this we have the trees, then the stones large and small and finally we have the flat finished level. Even to this day, the remnants of the bridge have this flat finished level. Due to the passage of time of many millennia, sand has accumulated over the structure and what we are able to see now is mainly sandbars and shoals. If we carefully shovel away the accumulated sand, 
we are certain to see the layers of the bridge construction. In the bottom layer, the wood used by the Vanara for the foundation would certainly be there. Obviously, over the last so many thousand years, the wood would have solidified and become carbonaceous material and would probably now be botanical grains. The text then speaks of the Vanara holding ropes on both sides of the bridge being constructed and the wood and the stones being piled between them. The text clearly mentions that the Vanara held ropes for many Yojana to build the bridge in proper linear alignment. From this description, it is clear that it was not just random throwing of stones, but a planned effort which took into consideration the concept of linear alignment which is even today evident from the aerial photograph of the bridge. The distances they cover each day is also mentioned in the text. In the text, it's explicitly mentioned that the total length of the bridge was 100 yojana in length and 10 yojana in width. This is a 10 is to 1 ratio. Today, at actual site conditions, the Rama Setu or Adams Bridge measures to 35 kilometers in length by 3.5 kilometers in width. This is also a 10 is to 1 ratio. After the victorious battle with Ravana, while returning with Sita to Ayodhya in the Pushpak Vimana, they fly over this bridge. Rama then points this bridge to Sita and states as to how difficult it was for them to construct and how it was only Nala, the engineer par excellence, who could execute it and Rama calls it Nala Setu. When did this Nala Setu come to be called Adam's Bridge? The bridge was originally called Nala Setu, as we have seen. Later the people, out of their admiration and veneration for Rama, started calling it Rama Setu and later it also got the name Setu Banda, that which joins two lands. This has been a walking bridge for many millennia. During the course of its early usage, one of the early Islamic religious leaders of Sri Lanka walked over this bridge and reached Lanka to do penance there. Since he was the early Islamic man, he was called Adam by the Sri Lankan Muslims. When the Europeans came to this part of the world, they could easily correlate to the name Adam and they started calling it Adam's Bridge in their records and the name stayed. In the last few decades, man-made satellites have been regularly orbiting the earth and photographing various parts of the earth. One such area they have photographed is the southern part of India. In this set of photographs, the bridge is also visible. It can be distinctly seen as a shallow underwater causeway connecting the two lands. These photographs do suggestively indicate it to be man-made due to its unique curvature. The opinion of many is that this could be the man-made bridge as detailed in the Ramayana text. Over the last few minutes, we have seen with a certain clarity and a detailed understanding how this bridge is a civil engineering marvel as explained in the text. A man-made accretion over a natural sea ridge. Today, on an average, this causeway is about 2 meters below water. When this bridge was built, it must have been at least about 1 meter above the then water level. That is, when the bridge was built, the sea must have been 3 meters or 9 feet below the present day sea level. As per the World Oceanography Report, a 9 feet rise in sea levels due to the melting of the polar ice caps and global warming should have occurred over 7000 years. This helps us to date the bridge construction to about 7000 years ago or 5000 BCE using oceanography as a dating tool. Today, we need to rightfully promulgate an order under the Archaeological Survey of India Act, Clause 4, to call this a Heritage Monument of India. It is a fit case to be called a civil engineering marvel of an ancient civilization.